Hi there, this is Lynn with Vicki Lee Bags. I hope you're having a really good day. We have an exciting project for you this week. It is a tote diaper bag, tote style diaper bag. It's really, really large. It's got tons of pockets, really, really fun amenities, okay? So we can start with this long crossbody strap, okay? I made it extra long so that dads could, you know, most dads can wear it um, as well. We have two shorter handles that I called grab and goes, okay? You do have an inset pocket right here, a zipper enclosed one, and the pocket goes all the way down so you can store lots of goodies in that. You have another slip pocket here on the front that is nine inches square. Lots of room in that pocket. The zipper is really fun because it's a jacket zipper, so it's a larger zipper, heavier weight, and it just comes right off the end so that your bag is completely opened. Okay, no tab on the end of this zipper. The inside, look at the bottom of the inside. I created it to be the same as the outside fabric. Two pockets, elastic pockets on the sides, and then two larger ones here in the back for clothing, diapers, anything you would like to put in it. On the opposite side, another inset zipper lots and lots of room in this bag. So I'm going to gather my things and we will get started. Okay, so here are the pieces that we're going to need to make this diaper tote bag. Your two outside pieces are 17 inches wide by 13 in height. You're going to need two of them. And I heavy interfaced these. I do need to take it over and do um, I forgot to do the, my fleece, um, fused fleece on the back because I do want this back bag to be a little bit heavier weight and a little bit um, softer and squishier. I forgot to do that, but I will do that. So I have my 808 Pelon heavyweight interfacing, and then I'm going to use my fusible fleece on that as well. I am not going to have to quilt it, okay? And then I have an outside pocket that we're going to do with that and it's two pieces because I'm going to use my focal fabric and my lining fabric and this is exactly nine and a half inches. So nine and a half up and down, nine and a half across. It's a nice square pocket for the front of the bag. Lightly interfaced both pieces. The bottom, the very bottom of the bag is heavily interfaced and it's 17 inches wide by six and a half. So my bag is going to be six and a half inches deep. Lots of room. We have um, another pocket on the outside is going to be um, the inset zipper pocket and it's 22 inches deep by 12 inches wide. And I have a heavyweight zipper Number five, we usually use a number three. We're going to use a number three zipper on the inside of the bag, but this is for the outside, and I had a nice heavy weight zipper I thought we would use. And if you have a number three, you can use that, but I am going to use a um, number five, okay? So that's just a little heavier duty zipper. And you're going to need, so that's 22 inches wide, I mean 22 inches deep by 12 inches wide, and at least a 12 inch zipper. And these are both my, um, or just black fabric. Okay, I'm not using the yellow for this. I don't want to see the yellow on the outside. So we have the um, pockets for the sides that we're going to attach the elastic to. And these are two of the same. They're heavy interfaced. I'm going to use, I'm also going to put some fusible fleece on them. Um, as I said earlier, I forgot to do that. So, and these pieces measure 13 inches. Remember, they're 13 inches going up and down by six and a half inches wide. Our elastic pockets we're going to use for those pieces are eight and a half inches wide. That's going to be two inches wider than the width of the um, part that we're going to put the elastic pockets on because the two inches wide are going to be condensed um, down to the same size of your pockets. These are 21 inches in height 
and eight and a half inches wide. And the reason why they're so long, 21 and a half, is because we're going to fold them over to make a nice deep elastic pocket. And what I've done is um, we're going to use the Disney fabric on this. So your focal fabric will be used, or you can do whatever you want. If you want to change the elastic um, side pockets, you're more than welcome to do that. This is your diaper bag. So now we're going to move on to the inside, and it's pretty much identical to the outside. You're going to have your two um, focal pieces of the liner, and these are lightly interfaced. They're 17 inches wide by 13 in height, two of them, lightly interfaced. Isn't that cute fabric? I just love this fabric. Okay, and so you've got your two side pockets that you're going to make your um, elastic ones to go on to. So this is still the bones of the bag. Two lining pieces, six and a half inches wide by 13. These are your two side pieces, lightly interfaced. Here's your elastic pieces to make those pockets. And these are eight um, and a half inches wide by 21 in height. Eight and a half inches wide by 20, 21 in height, lightly interfaced. You're going to have an inset zipper pocket on the inside if you would like. We're going to use a regular number three zipper. I chose white for mine, but the measurements for this is 10 inches wide by 21 in height. Okay, cute, cute. The inside of my <laughs> bottom is going to be the exact as the outside. I chose this dark fabric for the inside. I thought it'd be really cute when you open it up and you would have your Disney fabric on the very bottom. I thought that was nice. And of course this piece is six and a half inches wide by 17 inches. Same as the outside bottom of the bag. We're going to have pockets, um, large pockets for maybe diapers, clothing, whatever you want to put in your diaper bag. And these are 19 inches wide. It's just one piece, one piece, 19 inches wide by 21 in height because it's going to have elastic in it and it's going to condense down. Okay. So lightly interfaced again, 19 inches wide by 21 in height. This is the elastic we're going to use today. I'm sorry, I don't have any packaging so that you can run out and just buy the exact. Maybe you have one that's an inch wider. That'll, that'll work. But this is my half inch um, by whatever length we're going to use. I'm going to show you how to um, use this wisely so that there is no waste. Okay, but you're going to need at least a yard of it. Okay, let's just say a half yard to a yard, but I don't think we're going to even use a whole yard of it. Um, the only thing that I stressed about my elastic is I like it to be pretty easy to stretch. Okay, I don't want it too hard to stretch open because then it really distorts the, the bag. I just don't like that. And then our handles, we have two types of handles. We have our long cross bodies. You know, I'm also thinking of dads with this. Um, a lot of times, you know, dads carry a diaper bag too. And so I've made the crossbody a little bit longer than normal because we do have the adjustable on it. Okay, so, but I want it to be able to fit both. So it's four inches wide by 62 inches long. There's two pieces here. And I'm going to show you how I join them to be a real seamless um, one piece strap. Okay. It's going to be lightly interfaced, but I interface it after I've joined it, okay? And then we've got two grab-and-go straps, that's what I call them, and they're 19 inches long by 4 inches wide. I've already folded one over to show you kind of what they're going to look like, okay? Lightly interfaced, I hope I didn't forget that part, 19 inches by 4. Then we have our tabs for our crossbody strap. I usually always forget to mention the tabs, but this time I did not. They're four inches by three. And you can see I've already lightly interfaced them and ironed them. I'm going to show you how we do that. And let me show you all the little metal hardware we have to make all of this work. We have the tri-glide one inch 
Okay, I just ordered a bunch of these plastic ones. They're really nice for this project. You probably won't even um, see it, but it's very heavy duty. This one is for one inch because our strap's one inch. We also have two D-rings, one inch each. And then we have two swivel hooks, one inch each. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. You know me, I'm consistent. I have forgotten something, and we'll figure that out as we go along. So let me get my things uh, together, and we'll get started. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you have enough fabric for your zipper tab, okay, um, for the top of your bag. I wanted to make sure that you... Um, saved enough focal fabric or you might even change your fabric altogether. But these two pieces are 17 inches wide by 5 inches. There's two of them and they're going to be heavily interfaced. And my zipper is a number 5 and it's a jacket zipper so it does just zip right off the end and you can just put the two ends together just like at the bottom of your jacket. Mine is 21 inches. If you are going to use a different type of zipper, then you're going to, like maybe a number three, which is for like clothing. Most of the zippers we've been using has been a number three. You're going to want your zipper to be at least 23 to our 24 inches long, and you'll have to put a tab on it. So I'm just inserting this part right now to mainly make sure that you have the right fabric amount and the right um, zipper length, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take one of your outside panels, and I did use the um, heavy interfacing, and then I did fuse on some fusible fleece. So it is that, it's stronger, it's softer, it's, it's just wonderful. I love the feel of that. Okay, so go ahead and take your two nine and a half inch pieces. One is the lining and one is the focal, and we're going to put them right sides together. And I'm going to go ahead and pin on this side, and I'm going to leave a gap, probably four inches. Put another pin, and that's going to show me where to start and stop. So I'm going to start sewing here. I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to leave a nice big space and um, skip over it. I'm not going to sew right here. And then I'm going to continue here and go all the way around. This space lets me turn this whole thing inside out. So I'm just going to add a couple more pins. This pocket is really important that you um, sew very, very neatly because it's on the outside of your bag. And boy, you can sure tell if it's been um, rushed or not, okay? going to be a really nice little pocket on the front though. Okay. Okay, we'll start right there. Okay, sorry about that. It took me a little longer than I wanted. So we're going to use a quarter of an inch side seam. Actually, I'm going to start here where we are going to be um, ending the opening. Okay, I'm going to start there. That's just the way it worked out for me. I'm going to back stitch. Be very careful around the corner. You want to do a really nice clean pivot. This sewing machine is such a workhorse. Okay, we'll just stop right there, pivot. making sure the whole thing lays really nice. There's no bubbles. The 
sometimes it likes to shift when you're sewing. Okay, so this is the last time around because I'm going to backstitch right here because I have a four inch space to turn it through. Right there. All right. I also like to trim up the, um, the outside of the seam here. I think it just makes it a lot nicer when you go to um, turn it inside out. So I'm going to take my, my rotary cutter, but use whatever you have. And I think some of you have seen me do this before. And I'm only taking off a little bit. I'm not taking off a lot. I'm just cleaning up this edge. But what I like to do is I come across here and where we left the opening, I'm going to turn it and go out just like that. And here's the other opening, the other side. And we're just going to go in and pivot and cut away. And what that does is it leaves that tab. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier to tuck it under. So what I'm going to do now is just finish cutting all the way around to where I have half the seam I had before. Take out my corners. Careful not to go through my corners. Okay, so what we're going to do now is turn that right side out. I use a chopstick to actually go into my corners to poke those out, but I don't poke really hard. I'll push right through my seam and I don't want to do that. So it's just really gentle and I don't care if it's super sharp. That's not what I am going for, but I want to make sure all the corners are nice and crisp. That looks really good. Okay, so now I'm just going to flatten it out with my fingers. I will be taking it over to the ironing or to the ironing board. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is because I left that nice tab here, it's so much easier to tuck the whole thing in. I don't want to go in too far because it's going to leave a dip in my pocket. I want it to be as even as I can get it so it just doesn't even look like it's had to be pulled through. I'm just going to put a pin in right now. Okay, so go ahead and finish that. Get it all tucked in right there and take it over to your iron and go ahead and press it and I'll meet you back here. Okay. So that came out really nice. We just made that nice and flat and ready to put on to our bag. So what I like to do is now I'm going to fold it in half. And I didn't sew anything at this point because I'm going to put that open end at the bottom. Okay, because then we're just going to sew the three sides and it'll get caught up in that so it'll be closed. So I have, you know, I forgot to tell you that what we can do is fold this in half, our large um, outside piece panel and cut a little tiny notch right here and that's going to show us the middle of our panel and I'm going to turn it over and do it again and go ahead and do it to the other side as well okay 
And then what I'm going to do is find my bottom, and that's the opening that I have. And I'm going to fold this piece in half. And I'm just going to put a pin in the half just like that. I'm going to do it on the other side as well. It just keeps it really even, really nice. So make sure that your open side is on the bottom. And then what I like to do is I use my tall ruler. I'm going to set this here on my mat and I'm going to use the ruler to help me make sure that the pocket is lined up in the middle. So make sure the side of my panel is lined up and make sure the bottom is lined up. So now it's square on the mat. So the very middle of it, I know where that is because I just put a notch in. And I know where the bottom is because I had just put a notch in right there. I'm going to bring it down to about an inch and a half up, okay? And you can tell an inch and a half up because of the sides of your mat. That's perfect. And it gives me about two inches down. So that is the perfect placing of my pocket. It's level. It's, it's just right on, okay? So now I'm just going to put in a couple pins to secure that. Okay, so now I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to do a little, um, well it's going to come in just a little bit, but I'm going to do a small, small diagonal here. You know how they show on men's pockets where they put their pen? The pocket always has this little diagonal. I'm going to go ahead and do that real close to the edge though, okay? I don't want it out in here because I lose pocket space, but I'm going to do a little diagonal here. And I'm going to come down about an eighth of an inch, go all the way down and around. I'm going to catch my opening, sew that up, and come up and do another diagonal on the other side. Okay, so we're going to set that one aside. And we're going to grab our other panel that has nothing on it. And we are going to start our inset zipper. Now, as I was saying earlier, that um, my zipper is a little bit bigger than um, the average size three, so my opening is going to be a little bit um, bigger. But if you do have the three inch zipper, you're going to want to use the half inch opening. And today we're going to use a three quarter inch opening and I will explain the opening in just a second. So hopefully you interface the inside of your pocket. And what I want to do is to set my fabric down on my mat. <coughs> Excuse me just to where it's on a nice even line. And I'm just going to set this here, my pocket to be about, I don't know, half inch from the very, very top of my panel. Make sure it's centered here. And I'm going to put a pin in each corner. So what I want to do now is I want to grab my ruler and I'm going to come down from the top about an inch and a half. So right about there. I'm just following the guides on my mat. I'm going to take my really good trusty red pen And what I'm going to do is I want to come in an inch from the sides of my pocket, not from the side of my panel, but from the side of my pocket, an inch. So that takes me to right about here. And I'm going to come all the way to about an inch from the side here. It's not very scientific. I'm not that worried about this. It always seems to work out okay. 
Now I'm going to come down three quarters of an inch. If you have the three inch zipper, you're going to come down just a half inch. Mine's going to be a bigger opening because I have a much bigger zipper. Okay, then I'm going to draw another line following this one, an inch in and over. Okay, where these um, two meet right here, I'm just going to finish the rectangle. Okay. See that? I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. And then I'm going to dead center draw a line, but not all the way. I'm going to only go a half an inch from the ends. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. And then what I want to do is I want to draw a V from this corner. I'm going to zoom you in just a tiny bit more. Okay, so what I want to do is draw a little V from this corner to the center line, from the center line to this corner. I'm just drawing a V here, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now what I want to do is take the whole entire thing to my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew from about here on the top an inch in, small, small stitch, about a one and a half or two, preferably a one and a half, and I'm going to come along here, go all the way, just the outsides of my rectangular rectangle and I'm going to come back up here and do a very small little back tack. Okay, so here we are and you can see that that was sewn all the way around. Okay, so what I like to do now is I just take my rotary cutter, scissors would work well too. Be very, very careful with your rotary cutter because you can go a little bit too far. And I'm going to place my um, ruler in the very center on the center line and be sure only to cut from the V part to the V part. Never go into the diamond very far, okay? So I'm going to set that here. And I always come in just a little bit, okay? Because I, I don't want to make a mistake. Very, very careful. And I'll finish the rest with scissors, okay? Look at how nice that did. So now I'm going to finish with my scissors and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oops, I've got the wrong, wrong ones, sorry. Those did not work well for me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is finish this by cutting just to the very corner. Do not cut through your sewn line. It'll make such a mess and You'll just be so mad for the whole rest of your day. Okay, so just meet to the line. Jojo, you better not start parking. I can tell she's getting ready to rip roar with the neighbor dog. Just to the edge here. We're going to come around and do it again on the other side. Good girl, Jojo, don't start barking. Okay, come through all the way but not through. Okay, very, very good. I hope that turns out really, really well for you. Now, the idea here is we're going to remove our pins and what I want to do is I always kind of give these a little finger press here and at the bottom and what I want to do now, I better zoom you out, huh? Too close. There we go. What we're going to do now is pull the whole thing through to the other side. The whole entire, everything you sewed. This is where it always looks a little shady. We're not sure how this is going to turn out. <laughs> okay, so the whole thing has been turned through. 
Okay, so what I like to do now is I'm going to go ahead and bend this all the way to where you're just exposing the seam. Okay, you're not going to see any of this other fabric that is showing. You're going to fold right onto the seam. I'm going to zoom you in so that you can see this a little better. And I finger press all the way around. I don't want to see hardly any of my lining fabric showing. I'm just going to continue to finger press that. So that means you've got to take this part and fold it under. Just takes a little bit of work before we take it to the iron to make it more permanent. And then we actually sew it. It's a little bit tricky because it wants to keep coming out. But the idea is to just have your half inch or your three quarter of an inch opening. It's going to take me taking it to the iron to get it to do that, okay? But when you're done, it is so clean and so nice looking and will be prepared to put our zipper in there. Okay, so while I was doing a little bit of editing, I noticed that I skipped this one part that is pretty crucial. I really want you to see how we applied this zipper. Okay, so pretend that I don't have a zipper in here and we are at the point where we just finished ironing our opening in place. Okay, now we're ready to put the zipper underneath the opening and sew it on. So here is my pretend zipper because I already have mine put in and you're just going to set it down with your zipper pull on your left. Okay, then you're going to pick up your project and you're going to lay it over and make sure that your zipper pull is all the way up against your sewn rectangle. Okay, position it how you want it. You want the, of course, the zipper teeth to be exactly in the middle. You want to make sure that your zipper pull is all the way over to your left and take a few pins if you would like. I've done enough of these where I don't usually pin mine, but you can put the pins just to attach the zipper right above the um, rectangle that you've made, okay? When you take it over to your sewing machine, the idea is to sew as close to the edge here without coming off towards the zipper as possible. Actually, you would do well to stitch in the ditch. If you know what that means, it means your old sole line. Go ahead and follow that seam line. Come around and go very, very slow over um, your zipper. Come back around, pivot, and up over the top as close as you can. Okay? Then I'll meet you back here.
Okay, so now we are going to work on our two side pockets of the outside of our bag. I've already done one off camera to um, show you how your side pocket is going to look. I don't know if this is a good shot for you on my camera, but it's all elastic here on the top and it's got the double seam at the bottom. I'll show you how I do that. But it really does make a very nice large opening for a pocket, maybe a few diapers, whatever you want to be in there. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so you take your side piece that is heavily interfaced and also has the um, fusible fleece on it. And we're just going to set that aside for right now. Okay, so your very, very long piece, I, I do need to give full disclosure, mine may look a little bit different than yours because I didn't have enough of my Disney fabric, so I had to add some black, but you'll, yours will probably just be one piece, okay? So what I did, or what I want to do, is I want to put right sides together. And with a quarter of an inch, I want to sew that up. Because I added some black fabric, I did not have enough of my Disney fabric, I, I get to do this little um, part that is just kind, it's just kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is, here's my seam, and then there's black beyond that. I'm going to go ahead and let about half an inch of the black showing. Okay, so, but yours is probably just going to be one piece because I didn't know I was going to have to do this until a little bit later. Okay, so I just had to add some of the black. So now the top of it is just solid black, but yours will probably look more just like that. Either way is fine. Okay, so here's my elastic. And I'm just going to leave it really, really long, okay, because I don't want to waste any elastic. So let me show you how I do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the elastic underneath the black or your, you know, whatever your top of the pocket is. And I'm going to um, let it come out of this side just the tiniest amount, okay? Now I want to take this over and just sew that on. Right up to the edge, I'm just tacking that on, the elastic. Okay. Trim my threads. Okay, now what I want to do is just make sure that the whole thing is up against the top where I ironed it. And I am going to take it over to my sewing machine right now and I'm going to stitch, making sure I don't catch any of the elastic right underneath. Okay, all the way across. I'm just making a casing for the elastic. Now, if you're more comfortable making the casing first, before you put the elastic in, you would just sew along here, making sure it was a little bit wider than your elastic. But if you're comfortable and you want to try something new, just let this hang, give it a good shake so that you know that it's all the way up against the top of the seam, and then sew just a scant below it, holding this up like this so you know it's not going to catch the elastic, and that's what I'm going to do right now. I 
I'm going to make sure that my stitch length is a little longer because remember we had it at one and a half to do our zipper. So I want to make sure you're back up to two and a half or three, okay? See, all my elastic is still attached. So this is interesting. This is where it's really, it's really um, different than probably anything you have ever seen. I'm going to go ahead and take my side pocket, lay it down, and on this one, I'm going to use this as my example. I'm going to make sure that it comes down about three inches from the top and a good inch from the bottom and I'll show you what I mean by that because I want it to be exactly like I did my first one. So I'm going to lay it here and it's going to be three inches down and one inch from the top and I'm going to lay the sides together, okay? And I'm going to put some pins in to hold that. I'm going to zoom you in so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the top of my pocket. Oops, trying to get you in camera view here. I'm about three inches from the top, and the bottom is about an inch from the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is take it over to my sewing machine, and I'm going to sew from the bottom just on the very, very, very edge. Okay, I don't ever want this to be shown on the outside of the bag. So you're just going to catch it right along the edge so that you can attach it. And why we're doing this is so that when we're ready, we can pull this elastic and it's not going to come away from the edge. Okay? So start at the very, very bottom, super close to the edge. Just enough so it doesn't fall off the edge. Do a back tack. Okay, and cut my threads. Okay, so now this is attached and it allows me to pull on my elastic and it's not going to come off of the pocket. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this side. I'm going to make sure it's an inch up and make sure this one is three inches down and I'm going to place a pin right below, right below my elastic line. I'm just going to pin that in place. Okay. So that's not going anywhere, and it's just this big floppy thing right now. And go ahead and pin it all the way down, making sure you're an inch up from the bottom. Okay. 
And so this is what it should look like. This just this really large tube, okay? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it facing me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my elastic and just put my finger here on the very side of my pocket. And I am going to give it a pull. until you feel like you're putting a little bit too much stress on this side and it starts to come over. If it starts to come over, you went too far. Otherwise, you just keep pulling. Okay, and you just keep going like this with your finger. If you start pulling this up off the map, mat, you know it's come too far. Okay, so that is just about the max. I've even got a little, and if it's too much, you just lift this finger up a little bit and let it go. Okay, so that's perfect. Okay, so this is still laying down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this pin, and now I'm going to pin that one into place. Okay. That is absolutely going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is take it to my machine and I'm going to back tack this down and I'm going to sew it all the way down. Hold it carefully when you pull out your pin so you don't lose all your hard work. Back tack. Make sure that's on there very securely and just go down really close to your edge. Okay. You're not going to sew across the bottom just yet. You are not there. Okay, so there is the top of your elastic pocket. Didn't that turn out nice? Okay, so look, you saved all of this. You didn't pre-cut it first and have some extra left over. Now that I lay down waste. the center, find the center, and I'm just going to lay that down to be even with my inch. So just about an inch, and you're at the very, very center and I'm going to pop in a pin. Okay, that's going to kind of already show me where my um, pleats are going to be. Then I come out like this, and as soon as I come in an inch, I'm just going to fold that part over. Let me do it again. So my pin is in the middle. I'm going to use my thumb, come in about an inch. I'm going to push this part over, and that's going to give me about quarter of an inch of a pleat. It's kind of thick, but give it a pin. You're going to want to have that pin down so you don't lose that part, okay? So now you still have this side. You're going to come in an inch, and you're just going to push this over to the other side. And that made a nice little pleat. and give that a pin. Okay, so found my center, push this over at the same time that I pushed that, and it created a pleat. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my sewing machine, and as close to the edge as I can, I am going to give it a little um, short, short little seam right here. Then I'm going to come in a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to do it again. Okay? Ouch, I've been poking myself all morning. Okay. Little back tack. Come across. Really, really close to the edge. Just to Hold that down. 
I like the double seams. I think it makes it look very professional. Okay. We're going to do it again, quarter of an inch up from that one, okay? I'm going to use the side of my presser foot to keep it nice and straight. Give it a little back tack when I go over my pleat just to secure that. know what mommy and daddy is going to put in the side of this bag so you want it to be very strong. Okay. Remind me not to use black fabric when I'm giving a tutorial, okay? It really makes it difficult for you to see. And I'm really sorry about that. And there is your pocket. Okay, so I thought we would get started on the little um, tabs for our D-ring so that we can have our um, long strap. So what I've done here is we've taken our four inches by three and a half and I have folded it um, long ways and we've um, folded it in half and then I pressed it, made the two ends go towards the center, pressed that, folded it um, both ends so that the um, inside was tucked away. And so now what I'm going to do is um, sew both edges. Nice, big, fat stitch. So you can see the stitching. I love to show the stitching of our handiwork, okay? So, of course, I have two of them. I'm just going to do one quickly and the other one off camera. So there it is, and I apologize using black. I know it's probably a little bit more difficult to see. Go ahead and put it around your D-ring. And what I like to do is I usually put on my zipper foot because what I want to do is sew very, very close to the bottom of the D-ring. I don't like it when my D-ring turns on me when I'm using my bag. And so I'm assuming others don't like that as well. So what I like to do is put at least a couple stitches, you know, going back and forth using my zipper foot so I can get close to the edge. Be careful you don't break a needle. Okay, and then that's all I do with these until we attach it to the right above the pockets on the bag and I'll be right back to show you how I do that. Okay, so that went well. I like that little line right across there so I know that my D-ring is not going to slip when I put it on. So grab one of your pockets <coughs> and I like to set my tab about, let's see, the D part that we've hidden, okay? I'm going to put that at about an inch and a half down. So go ahead and measure that on your mat and make sure it's centered at an inch and a half down. And then sew it on. I still have my zipper foot on, but it's going to be fine. Okay, so now I want to attach our um, grab and go straps and those are again made exactly like our tabs and our um, other strap that are longer ones. So, but these are called grab and goes because there's so many times that you want to just pick up your purse, bag, tote, um, diaper bag, you know, whatever, um, but you don't want to pick it up by its long handle. So I've created these short handles that you can literally just grab and go. So that's where that name came from. Okay, so how we're going to attach these, are you going to make sure you make a perfect horseshoe? Okay, so it's going to look just like this. 
little bit hard to see with the black. And what you're going to do is line up your mat, the top of your bag with your a line on your mat. And my notch is right here, so I'm going to line that up with a straight line that's on my mat. And I'm going to make sure this is correct. And I'm going to come over two and a half inches and lay the center right on two and a half inches and pop in a pin. And over two and a half inches from the little notch that we made and just center it on the two and a half. <coughs> Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to go very, very close to the edge and just go back and forth just two times and I'm going to do it with the other okay, one. Okay, so you know what? We pretty much have the outside of the bag. We have our two pockets. We have our um, zipper, inset zipper. We have our outside pocket and our bottom doesn't really need anything. So let's just take all those pieces and just set them aside. And we have our long strap that I want to do last because while it's still fresh in your head, I want you to go ahead and do your side pockets for your liner. And I want you to do them exactly how we did our outside pockets, okay? Just to save some, some time, I'm not going to go over them again. But I do want to say that this is lightly interface. These are the two sides that are going to, on the inside of the bag, that are going to have the elastic pockets put on them. And here they are. I did have enough fabric for these. I didn't have to compromise and put a different color to make it work. These two are lightly interfaced. And basically, just to refresh real quick, you just sew them right sides together. You're going to turn it around and I want you to go back if you need to and follow exactly how we did the outside side pockets. That's how we are going to do these, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do my own and I'll meet you back here when I'm finished. Okay, so I got my two side pockets done with the elastic. They came out really well. And now we're going to be working on the a double elastic pocket for the inside. And this is pretty much done the same way, but you know, we're just going to go over it anyway so that you won't have any uh, doubt, okay? So this is our really long, wide piece, and we're just going to put right sides together. And we're just going to sew these two raw edges together using about a quarter to a half inch, it's your preference, whatever you would like to do. A little back tap. pockets are going to be really good for diapers, clothing, bottles, whatever, whatever they choose or you choose. Lots of room. Okay, so we're going to pull this through. This is going to have to go over to the ironing board. Now, like we do most of our pockets, what I like to do is I like to leave the seam part exposed. Can you see that? So that'll actually be where our elastic goes, and then I will sew the stitch in the ditch right down in here, and you really won't see it, and that'll just make a really nice um, look for our pocket. Okay, so this is what it looks like after I pressed it. I went ahead and did the crease all the way down. Not a really hard press, but just a little bit so that I can find the middle anytime I'm going to need it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my elastic and put it all the way through to the left side. And you might remember this is familiar. I'm just going to allow a little bit to show on this end. And I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just tack that down so that part doesn't move. Okay. Okay, so my elastic goes all the way through. Now what I want to do is pick up the bottom end. My elastic is now on the top and give it a good shake. I want to make sure that the elastic is all the way up against the folded line. And to ensure that it's going to stay there, I'm going to put in a few pins right there where I know I'm keeping it in place. So it's just going to be right under it. I can feel it with my, my nail, okay? For me, this is still a lot quicker than making a casing and using the pin to pull it through. But either way is correct. Okay, so now I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'll remove the pins as I go. And I'm going to sew just on this side of the line that the um, seam made, okay? Just this side of it. And I can feel with my nail where the elastic sits. small back tack. Okay, and this is how I'm going to check it. I'm going to hold this end. Actually, no, I'm going to hold both the elastic and the fabric. And I'm going to check it. And yes, it is free to work inside of there the whole way. Okay, so what I want to do now is take your, your panel And for this one, I want to bring it down exactly two inches. Just two inches. And I'm going to put in a pin. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to sew it close to the edge all the way down, just like we did our other pocket. Other four pockets. You've done four pockets so far today. As close to the edge as you can get it. pulling on it, okay? Oh, 
Okay. Now what I want to do is take this end that still has the long piece of elastic and we're going to just lift this fabric out of the way. Make sure you're down two inches and one inch from the bottom. And we're going to put in a pin right below the elastic. I'm just going to pin it all the way down. Okay. Before we do anything with this area, remember the part that I had you make a, a seam on? That is your very center. So what I want you to do, because I hope, if I didn't tell you before, you're going to need a notch in your side panel. I always just automatically do that. I have one here, and I have one here at the bottom. And I'm going to line up my little iron pieces with that, but I'm going to make sure I'm exactly two inches down and one inch from the bottom. And I'm going to put some pins in on either side. Maybe one on this side, one on the other side, just on either side of the pressed line. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and right below where the elastic is, I am going to go ahead and just sew a line. Do not sew through your elastic piece, okay? Just sew from the top here all the way to the bottom and back tack. Your ironed line will be your guide to keep it straight all the way down. And do a back tack. Okay. And you can take out your pins. Okay, so your elastic is still free to move about, okay? What I want to do now is take it back over to my machine and I want to sew um, from here Let's see, do I need to do that now? Probably not. So never mind, just leave your pins in there. So what I want to do now is I want to pull on my elastic all the way across, ignoring that you sewed up the middle, okay? You can still pull on this side. And remember, you only want to pull until this part starts to get distorted and then you are you are done because this is very soft we used a light interfacing it will come up just a little bit and that is acceptable because it'll get caught in the side pocket we'll be sewing that together so that's okay just as long as you have a good amount of elastic that's fine but don't distort it too much okay you'll just have a big mess so now what I want to do is take it over, I'm going to put a pin in right here. What I want to do is take it over and I want to, I can still see my iron line and I just want to put um, a couple um, back tacks from this line to the top and down just a couple of times. Perfect. 
and then we'll come over and we'll finish this pocket with the elastic. Take out my pin. See, that's going to make a nice, nice big pocket. And then we're going to do the same with this one. Pull it just until when you try to meet up this end with the side, it doesn't pull it up too much, okay? A little bit is fine, but you don't want too much. You know, it doesn't take a lot for the pocket to be expandable. It's not like you have to have it really, really tight with the elastic for it to work. Now I'm going to put the pin in to hold this here. And I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to start here where the elastic is and I'm going to sew it all the way down very close to the edge. Pull my pin out and really hang on to that. You don't want to let that go. You will lose all your hard work. <laughs> as close to the edge as you can get it. You're going to back tack a couple of times over your elastic. you got to remember to sew it down well because we don't know exactly what's going in these pockets, but it needs to hold. This would make a wonderful weekend bag, getaway bag too. Lots of pockets, little hidden pockets, your inset zippers are great. And this is just an example. I hope you expand on it to meet your personal needs. These are great sellers too. People like a lot of pockets. Can't go wrong. Okay, so now I get to cut off my elastic. It is secured. And again, we did not waste any elastic, which is always a good thing. Okay, <clears throat> you'd be happy you put that seam down the middle. And if you'll remember when we did our side pockets, what we did is we found the center of this. This is a little bit distorted. Don't worry about it. It's going to be sewn into your your side pockets and it'll be just fine. But do the best you can to find the center. And I always turn it to the side like this. And I put the center down. Make sure it's only one inch up. And I place a pin. this up like this and what I like to do is I come in a good inch and that helps me decide where my pleat is going to go. I come in an inch and I pop a pin. These plates aren't going to be as large as your side ones. They just aren't. And that's okay. I just wanted you to know when that's when that happens with you, it's really, really okay. So now I'm going to put my finger where my pin is right there, and I'm going to come in an inch. Push that over, and that is where my pleat is going to be. So come to the other side, lift this up, do the best you can to find the middle. It's not super, super crucial. Put in a pin. Okay. 
lift this up a little bit, come in about an inch, push over, and that is where your first pleat will be. There's so many different ways to make these types of pockets, but this has been my little go-to method for a long time now. So go from here, push it in. Okay, first lift this up, make sure it's up. Come in about an inch, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. And there's where my pleat is. You will notice the pleat, like I said, is not as big. So now we're going to take it over and we're going to sew all the way across here. But when we go over the pleats, remember to back tack a little bit. What you want to do now is you want to put your um, panel right side up and open this part up and you want it right sides together. You want to be able to always draw on your interfacing, okay? Never on your fabric. That's how you know it is correct. And you're going to just set this down on your mat, follow a line, any line. And you're going to put this down, make sure it's in the center. There's always a little notch in my fabric right here so I can find my center. I'm just going to put a little finger crease right there. And I'm going to set it down about a half an inch. Let me make sure that's going to be fine. Yeah, that still leaves us lots of room. If you need to cut this down just a little bit, just go ahead and, and cut it. I'm, I think I'll cut mine down just a half an inch. I'm sorry about that. I did measure some of my pockets just a little bit different. I let myself get in a hurry during that one. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and just take off a half an inch from the bottom. Okay, right sides up, interface up, which means right sides together. <clears throat> and I've got my little finger, finger press crease right there, so there's my center. I'm going to come down actually about one inch, okay? One inch from the top. I'm going to put some pins in the corners. very close to the edge because I don't want my um, drawing to get in the way, my pins to get in the way of my drawing. So I'm going to set my ruler down. Remember this is square on my mat so it's nice and straight and I can see my measurements on the side. I'm going to come down an inch and a half and I'm going to draw a line. Now my line is going to go I'm going to need to leave a space here one inch from my edges. So I'm going to start here, come across and stop one inch from my edge. Make this a really nice line that you can see. I'm going to come down a half an inch is all. Okay, let me check that again. and follow that exact line. Okay, I'm going to fill in the side so I make a really nice rectangle. Now I need to draw a line exactly in half so I'm going to come up one quarter of an inch and a half inch from my rectangle I'm going to start my line and go all the way across till I get to a half an inch for the other one. And what that did is it left me room to freehand draw a V from this line to the corner, from this line to this corner on both sides. 
Now what I'm going to do, and I'm going through this rather quickly because I have videos on this and also we have done this before, is I'm going to take this and with a very small stitch, I'm going to sew all the way around the rectangle. Okay, I'm going to remove my pins. Now I like to take my rotary cutter. If you don't have one, scissors work fine. Very, very carefully, I only cut from the V to the V, and the rest of the cutting I do with my um, little scissors. But you can overcut this onto your V, and you don't want to. So I just set it down a little bit ahead of my V, and I stop a little bit ahead of my V so that I don't. And you have to give it a little bit of pressure to have it cut through all of this interfacing fabric and stuff and I stop right there. And see, it cut it really nicely. Now I take my scissors and I cut from the V only to the corner. Do not cut through the corner. Okay, here comes the fun part. I like to finger press first, and what that means is I just fold it over on the line around the sides and then the top. That does help a lot. Then you're just going to take this and simply just push it through all of it, every piece of this. We've already done this with the outside, so you kind of know what you're in for. And I'm going to turn it upside down now. I'm going to make sure that all of this is out, all of it. And in a minute, we're going to take it over to the ironing board. And I'm just going to press it, making sure that only the seam is showing and you have to really work at this sometimes to make sure it's it's just exactly how you want it you don't want this opening very big and you want this very very accurate okay and there is my half inch opening so what you do now is you take your zipper and it's way too long that's that's okay and you just set it down with your zipper pull going this way Okay, you want that nice and ready to use. And I just set this over my zipper and just check to make sure that it's, it's accurate. Everything looks really, really good. Now at this point, what I like to do is I take my glue I like to use craft bond or any type of fabric glue. And this works really, really well. And I just put a few dots along my zipper, way away from the teeth. And too much is not good at all. I'm going to come to the other side. Not exactly sure where I'm going to cut my scissor cut my zipper down a little bit so I just kind of faked it right there so what I do is I just leave it I pick this whole thing up and I just make sure that it's level with that one right up against its edge and then I lay the rest of it down exactly where I think it's going to go make sure your zipper is even and if you're comfortable with it you can go ahead and put a few pins in so it's been sitting for a minute. So one of the things that you can do too, if you're not really comfortable with pinning, because it does create a little bit of dis, you know, being distorted, is just put a pin on the very, very end. And one at the very, very front. 
and that should do you nicely. It'll really, really help to stay in place, okay? Carefully pick the whole thing up. Oh, I forgot to put my zipper foot on. That's probably a good idea. Careful putting it under your machine. You can make that glue and everything just come right off. You can pull this whole thing off. I come down about an inch, okay, away from the zipper head. Stay just far away from that so you can get this started without worrying about where the zipper is. I set it down, and the idea is to sew as close to the zipper tape as possible without going off the edge. And I do want to make my zipper, um, my stitch length, to about two and a half or three. I don't need it to be really tiny. Okay. And take your time. Go slow. You may have to stop several times to make sure it's absolutely correct. Be very careful going over your zipper. Go slow. Make sure your needle's down before you pivot. Adjust it if you need to. It's really important. This is really accurate, really straight, or it just doesn't look right. Okay, so our next step is to turn the whole thing over, and we're going to cut off our zipper about, just leave about a half of an inch, okay? And save this because you could put a zipper pull on it for another project. So you're going to bring this up to the top. Put a few pins in it. We talked about this and make sure all this is folded and out of your way and go ahead and sew up your pocket. Okay, so hopefully your pocket came out just really nice like mine did and make sure it's working well and that is a nice big pocket. Okay, so we are at a point now where we're going to take all of our outside pieces And whichever one you want, let's just go ahead and start with the one that has the inset zipper. And take one of your pocket pieces, okay? Make sure that you're using the, putting the um, elastic part on the top with the top of your tote. Set them down, right sides together. You're going to put your pocket just down like this, and you're going to line up your edges. Grab some pins and pin from top to bottom, just like this, all the way down, making sure that that's absolutely even with the other side. This is when it really gets fun, assembling the whole bag. I like to set this one about a quarter inch from the bottom because that's going to tell me that that is where I need to stop and give a little back stitch, just a quarter inch from the bottom. So this is what it should look like when you are finished, okay? And you open it up, make sure your top is with your zipper and then a top, okay? So it's a trifold at this point. Now what I want you to do is turn it over 
like this, your zipper away from you, and take the bottom of your bag, which is this long piece here, turn it upside down and just line it up on the very bottom front of your bag. And it's going to come over on the sides, about a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on that side. That is absolutely correct. So I'm going to find my center by putting a little tiny, tiny notch in there, never into the inseam, okay? The smallest not notch. And you're going to want to line up your notch on your bag. Okay, and then we're going to pin it. Oh, great. Now my dog is going to have a fit. UPS driver just went by, so we got to protect the household. Okay, Jojo, thank you. Hey, hey. Great. Sorry about that. little stinker just kept on going. Okay, so make sure you have this pinned a quarter inch from the edge here you don't want to sew. You always want to leave that open so that you can pivot your pieces and make them fit correctly. Okay, and then you can see when you open that, that is actually going to be the bottom of your bag. So it's starting to take shape, huh? So the only other piece we have to put on is the other side. So how I do that is I lay this all open. By the way, finger press this really, really good, okay? Even your sides. Sometimes I will go in there and cut out some of the bulk, but we'll do that after we put on the other side. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that you put this on correctly. So what you do is you make sure that um, these two are matching, okay? So you want to have your handles matching. And how I, what I mean by that is this part needs to, it's up right now. See how it's up? You're just going to fold it towards the top. That's the easiest way for me to explain that. Line up your notches if you have them and start pinning from the middle to your outsides and make, a, make the pin stop a quarter inch from the edges to remind you to stop there. I don't sew all the way through. You know, some people do. I just don't think I like the result of my corners and the way they look when I don't. Somehow it works out just fine. It gives it room to open or to close or open, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down to a quarter of an inch. Now it's getting to be a, a large piece, so go very, very slow. It gets a little bulky. Most of it will sit on my lap. Back tack, quarter in, inch in. I feel like I have to keep saying that because I forget myself. I sure love my heavy duty machine. It's loud and it's squeaky, but boy, it just hums right through all these thicker pieces. So when I open this up, it'll really start to take shape. Okay, so here is what it's going to look like. If I can get it all in my camera view. <laughs> okay, so it is pretty close to be being a bag. 
So now what will you do is you turn it to make right sides together and you this is why you leave your seams open a little bit because now what you need to do is turn your pocket to face your bottom. Turn your pocket to face the bottom and you're, it's a small jaunt but but see, it's your side of your um, bottom and the side pocket, okay? And then pretty soon we'll come over here and we'll sew these two together, which is the side of your pocket in the back panel or your front panel, whichever one you want to call it. But right now you're going to start seeing why we left a quarter of an inch so that we can maneuver this very, very easily, okay? So I'm going to do that again in case you missed something, but just lay the whole thing out. Fold your pocket in just a little bit like this. Bring the bottom to the side or the bottom of your bag to the bottom of your pocket. Hold on to that and you're going to pin that in place. And when you sew it, you're going to do the same thing, quarter inch. from the edge and then quarter inch from the edge. This is where it gets a little tricky to sew, but if you go slow, you won't lose your place. If you follow exactly what I'm telling you, you won't lose your spot. and you fold it whichever way is most comfortable so that you can get it under your machine. And it's going to be a very short distance that you're going to sew a quarter inch from there to a quarter inch to there. If you're a little bit confused, um, just go back and watch it again. Quarter inch from your edge. Do a little back tack. Go nice and slow. You're going through a lot of layers. And the whole project is getting a little bit heavy. Stop at about a quarter of an inch. open this up to see what you did, it'll start to really make a lot of sense. Granted, it's inside out. We're going to pull it through in a little bit when we're done, but see how it is creating walls? Okay, so now we're going to take the other side We're going to do the same thing. You need to line up this side of the bottom of your pocket to the side part of your bottom. Okay? When we sew up our sides, it'll be so fun to see what we have. Okay, so right now we're still on the bottom though. Don't get ahead of myself. Carefully fit that under your machine. Quarter inch in. This is where I take it really slow because this is where it's really easy to get bound up with the machine. This is a lot of layers. Sometimes I have to stop even before the quarter of an inch, more like at a half an inch because my measurements were off just a tiny bit, but I want to make sure I have enough room to pivot and that's all that matters. 
Okay, so now we're pretty well boxed in. Now we just pretty much created this beautiful three-sided panel. The bottom is attached, okay? So what's logic now is we're going to pull this side up and do the very, very same thing so that we have our box all the way in. Okay, so I just finished sewing up my fourth side and look at this thing. It is so huge. So before you turn it right side out. I know you're very anxious to do that, but what I want you to do is tuck in any side. I don't care where you start, and all I want you to do is with scissors or your rotary blade, be very, very careful doing this, I just want you to cut off the very, very corners. Okay, don't cut into any of your sewing at all. That would be a disaster. So I'm just going to go around and just nip off my bulky, bulky corners. I don't need them. They don't serve any good purpose, but make your bag too bulky for when you put it together as well. Okay, so get rid of all four of those little corners. Isn't this exciting? You're at a really fun part. Okay, now you can turn it right side out just so that you can see what you have done. This is a nice big bag. Like I said, it's not just a diaper bag, although that is what we were aiming for. It's also a weekend bag. You may want to put an enclosure on the top. I'm just leaving mine tote style mostly because of time. Okay, and there is your giganto, beautiful outside of your bag. Okay, look at those pockets. Look how nice and big and roomy those are. Isn't this fantastic? And your little, you know, your big zipper over there. This is gonna be absolutely wonderful. Okay, so we do need to set it aside although we'd like to just stand here and stare at it for a while. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to put the inside together exactly the same way. And guess what? You are going to be on your own. I'm just going to give you a short refresher, okay? So just start with one of your panels. Make sure the top of your pocket is at the top of the bag. And only do this piece by piece. Don't think you're going to put the whole thing together and then sew it. It just, it, trust me, it does not work. Okay, so you're going to lay down one of your pockets. And you're going to lay down your second pocket the same exact way so that you make this a trifold. My bottom is black. It's different. But once I open it, this would be right sides together so that it would open. You take your beautiful piece with your elastic pockets and remember how you remember how to uh, put that together. You have it laying as though it was going to meet the top of your bag. And that's how you add your bottom. Okay? So I'm going to trust you. I'm going to leave you. If you get stuck, watch how we did the outside of the bag. It is exactly the same way. This is the part that I want you to really pay attention to. The bag needs to be pulled through. We're going to birth the bag. So on this side, when you're putting on your elastic pockets, I want you to sew it to the bottom. Remember, you're going to leave a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch on your edges, then you're only going to sew in about, I don't know, two inches. Leave a really nice big opening right here, just um, back tack right here on your edges, because this whole thing needs to be pulled through. It's a very heavy duty bag, so leave the opening as big as you can. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but my, hand, my fingers are about nine inches. So I'm going to sew quarter inch from the side, come in just two inches, quarter inch from the side. I need this to be open and a lot open. 
Okay, so you have a lot to do, and I will so, see you when you So, hey, you're look, we finished this. I hope it went well for you. It did go well for me. Um, I do want to say that if you struggled a little tiny bit with the um, elastic in the seam part, wanting to pull in, that that's pretty normal. I should have mentioned that before, but um, hopefully you got through that okay. So I did leave a nice wide opening so that we can berth the bag but you're really starting to see how wonderful this lining is going to be for your project right okay so on to the next step okay so now we're going to take the two pieces that you heavily interfaced and we're going to take them over to the ironing board and what I want you to do is take each end and fold it over exactly a half inch and give it a press and then this side of course same thing okay then I want you to take it and fold the whole thing over in half make a really really nice crease here because this is the end that we're going to add our zipper to and that's all we need to do because we're just going to attach it to the bag and the raw edges will be caught up in the the seams okay so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back Okay, so I did do that with both of them, and what I wanted you to do is make sure when you lay them side by side, remembering your zipper is going to be sound, uh, found right in the middle, is that these are exactly the same. You might have to turn over one of these um, half inch edges just a little bit more, okay, and that way it just looks aesthetically, you know, perfect and beautiful. Okay, so that's all we had to do with that part. Now what I would like to do is take my zipper. I'm going to fold one end over on the top. Okay, so here's my zipper. And I'm going to just take this over and I'm going to fold it down. And I'm just going to put a couple little stitches right here to fold it under. To hold it under. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other side while I'm here. Sorry about that. I thought you could see. Just a couple stitches to hold that down. It's going to flare out a little bit, but that's okay. You're not going to see that. Back and forth, just back and forth. I like being able to zoom you, zoom you in and out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Put my hand behind it so you can see. Can you see that? Okay, it's got a little bit of a V shape. Okay, so now what I want to do is take one of my tabs, I mean one of my panels, and I'm just going to lay it next to it. Okay, now I'm going to take mine over to the sewing machine. I am going to use my um, zipper foot, and you can watch me do this if you would like. And I don't have it exactly to the very top, so I don't have it perfectly even. I exceed it just a little bit with this particular one. I just bring it up just a little bit higher. Okay, so you can see that my panel is a little bit higher than my zipper. Just like an eighth of an inch, just the tiniest bit. And I lay this down next to it the distance that I want. And my distance is about, I don't know, quarter of an inch away. Okay, and I'm just going to take this over, use it a, a stitch about two and a half in length, maybe even three, and just sew it right here close to the edge and then away from the um, edge about another eighth of an inch. So I'm going to have two lines going down, okay? I'm going to zoom you out. I'm going to focus my camera so that you can see what I'm doing up close. Okay, so I have my zipper and my panel. I'm going to slide that under my zipper foot and set my needle down. Okay. 
I'm going to move my zipper down and out of the way and I'm just going to line this up. Remember I want to be about a quarter of an inch away from my zipper. You can pin it if you'd like. I don't care to take the time to do that. My nice loud sewing machine. <laughs> Sometimes it has a little trouble getting started. That's normal. Okay. Really close to the edge here, and I'm constantly gauging, making sure that it is the correct distance apart. Okay, I'm going to zip up my zipper. I'm at a good point to do that. Make sure your needle is down. Lift, lift that up. There you go. Now it's completely ready for me to finish. Okay, when I get to the end here, the very last bit, I'm going to lift this, I'm going to turn the whole thing over, and I'm going to continue down the very side just to close this, this gap that we have right here. Right on the edge. Okay, a little back stitch. Now you're going to need to go and do that on the other side. Start right there at the edge. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my foot so that it's going in the right direction. Set my needle down. Make sure these are properly set down just the way you ironed them, nice and straight and flat. Set my needle down. Might need a little encouragement to get started. Back stitch just a couple times. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to start on this end because what I want to do now is go and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to start here at this corner, come down, and I'm going to sew parallel to my other seam that I sewed it on. It just looks really nice, it looks really professional. Try to go as straight as you can, okay, and just, like I said, it really gives you a very professional look. Cut your strings and start all over, but this time you're going to use it, go, go to the other end, the very bottom end, zoom you out so you can see exactly where I'm at. Okay, so now we're starting at the bottom of the zipper, and I'm going to line it up to where I'm only about an eighth of an inch from the other line. I'm going to back stitch. And then continue up. Just till I get about an eighth of an inch from the, the one that's going across the same parallel with the zipper. Pivot. And then I'm going to come across this one. Very, very neat. Very, very tidy. Go really slow. It's absolutely going to be beautiful when you're done. Like I said, it gives a very professional look. I've noticed a lot when I'm top stitching lately, I do two full lines. I think it just looks really nice. Now if your zipper's in the way, go ahead and move it. I'm 
come to the end and we'll stop about an eighth again, eighth of an inch, turn it and go the opposite. Go the opposite way. Back stitch. And there you have it. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. And we're going to do it exactly the same way we put this one on, okay? So when you start this, you want to bring it up just an eighth of an inch, exactly even with the other one. And you always start with this side, not the side piece. Okay, I always start with the, the main body. That way I make sure it's, it's safe. Then I go back and do that. So I'm going to finish that off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my zipper panel. I just love it. It came out really great. I can pull it all the way down and separate both zippers. But I want to bring over the main part of the bag now. And what I want you to do is I went ahead and put my pins. I marked the center of the bag. So I have a pin here and a pin here on the other side. Okay, this is something completely different. You've never seen me do this before, but it is actually very, very easy. So your zipper panel um, is going to be facing... So here's my zipper panel. Here's the, the zipper. It's upright. But what I want you to do is turn it to face this side or any side of your bag. It doesn't matter. Whichever one is the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so it was like this. We were looking at the very top. Here's my zipper pull, and we're going to turn it and face the bag. Okay, so what I should do right now, though, is find the center and put a pin in where the exact center is. This will help me line it up with the center of the bag. I'll turn it over and do the other side as well. Okay, so we'll get back to where we were. Here's my zipper pull. It was facing up, but now I'm going to face it towards the bag. Line up the two pins and also make sure this is flush at the top. You don't want it raised or lowered. You want it exactly perfectly right. Just flush and put your pin in here. Now you're going to continue to pin all the way. About every two to three inches go ahead and put in a pin until you reach the end of your zipper panel. seam gets a little bit thick here, but you should be okay. Okay, now we're going to continue from the middle. Make sure it's flush and come up on the other side and pin. Does not matter if you go across your strap. It's okay. And it should line up with your seams on both sides, but if it doesn't and it's not too far off, don't worry about it, okay? So now it is on. And I just want to show you that when you pull it up, and if you can pull it over, you can see that it will be right when we get finished with this, okay? So now what I want you to do is you're going to take it over to your sewing machine, and you're going to put it on your sewing machine like this on its side, and right here with the first pin, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch along here just to attach both of them, okay? I'm not going to take you with me. It's very, very simple, okay? So you're just going to start here, quarter inch down, and sew this across. When you get to the other end where your zipper pull end is, you're just going to um, go back and forth to reinforce it, okay? Woohoo! Okay. Cut off my little stringies here. Okay, so we did sew a quarter of an inch away. And you can see now when you fold this over, 
it's going to be right sides up. Your um, straps are not um, hindered at all. Okay, so now what you do is let it fall back to the other side. Absolutely, turn, just turn it around and open your zipper as far as it'll go without coming off the end. I can let mine come off the end because it's a jacket zipper, but I'm going to show you as though um, it wasn't a jacket zipper, okay? So what I want to do now is just, un I just unzipped it all the way. I'm going to bring that one side up and over. Like this. And so the zipper um, end is right here. Okay. And what I want to do is put it on the center to the bag. My pins are helping me to find the very center and pin that on. You want to be absolutely level with the top, okay? Come across here and pin it on. This is actually a very, very easy way to do this. Make sure it's flush with the top, okay? I'm just going to put in a couple more over here. This is actually a really nice heavy-duty bag. There are so many variations that it's just not even, it's just not even funny. There's just so many different ways that you can change this. You can put ruffles on it. There's just a lot of different things you can do. And I hope you try them. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just take this over, fold it like this, and I'm going to sew along this edge a quarter of an inch. So I have my presser foot on the side here. I did move my needle so that it's not quite centered. I wanted it right on a quarter of an inch. We're going to back tack as soon as we get to the panel. And I did extend, by the way, I did extend, extend my zipper length to about a three and a half. Okay, so it's a little wider stitch because basically we're just tacking it on. felt my zipper underneath my inset zipper and I wasn't sure what that was for a second. Okay, so continuing forward. Nice slow pace, making sure it's nice and even and correct. Pulling my pins out as we go, okay? Rarely will you ever see me sew over a pin. does happen, but not often. Okay, so now you just let these lay nice and flat against the sides. And I am I wanted to say, mine actually got twisted in the end when I was putting these on, but basically all I had to do was just flip it one way, but whew, that made me a little bit nervous. If yours did get twisted, then, and you have this type of zipper that it's a jacket zipper, hopefully you just opened it up and you could turn it around. If you had the um, size 3 zipper and that happened, well, it just happens. That's why I put in there that you need to check before you sew it because it can um, get twisted if we don't turn it the right way the first time. 
And if that happened, I'm sorry, but it has happened to me before. So here we are. Let these just lay flat. And we're going to turn this bag inside out. This is when I really, really appreciate how heavy duty our bags are when we add the heavy interfacing and the fusible fleece. It really does make a nice, heavy, thick, wonderful bag. Okay, and allow your zipper panels to go inside. Okay, that's just now becoming the inside of the bag. Make sure your zippers are tucked down, okay? And your two side tabs need to be down. Take your lining <clears throat> and turn that right side out, if you will. And think about how you want to put this in there before you do, because it's going to reflect how the end of the bag is going to end up. So in other words, if you want your inset zipper to be you know, on one side or the other, um, this is a good time to be thinking about that. Um, for mine, I have my inside inset zipper um, towards you, so it's the back, in the back, and I am going to put my two um, elastic pockets against that. No special reason, I just thought it would make a good balance for the bag, but you do yours any way you want. And go ahead and set this in here. Kind of play with it a little bit. Make sure that the bottom is fitting the bottom. Okay. And then go to your sides. And what I want you to do is line up your two seams. And you're going to put in a pin. on the right, on the outside of it. Okay, put in a pin on the outside. It gets pretty thick, so just take your time. Okay. Okay, that looks really good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come across the back side with my pinning. Just right, good. My notches line up, but yours may not, so we're just going to go very slow, making this even at the top. Put in a pin. Okay, so I want you to do this all the way around. Keep in mind you may have to make a few adjustments. If your lining is just a little bit too big for your bag, you can actually take your lining on one corner and just give it a very small fold and see if that'll do it. If it's really way too big, you are going to have to pull the whole thing out and just re-sew your seams along um, the top just a little bit to make up the difference, okay? So check and see how much too big it is, make a measurement, and go ahead and sew up the seams accordingly, okay? Okay, so I've got mine pinned all the way around, and what I'm going to do is put my sewing machine on the highest stitch length, which is a 5 on my machine, because it's basically just kind of attacking at this point. So if I should ever have to take it apart, it's just not going to fight me. This, the stitches aren't really, really big at this point. So, okay, so I'm just going to put this over my machine very, very carefully. It doesn't matter where I start. I want to do a little bit more than a quarter of an inch so I can hide all my seams that I have made previous. Little adjusting, okay. Sometimes it just fights you just a little bit, a little bit. Please take your time, okay. 
So I'm going to move my needle so that it's a, almost a half of an inch seam, okay? Seems like a lot, but it's really actually a very good amount. Go slow because your thicknesses are quite a bit at this point, especially adding your zipper panel. I'm going to remove my pins as I go. Going over my first seam, and that needs to go very slow because it gets very, very thick. Okay, make sure that my um, handle tab is down and that I'm not sewing anywhere near the D-ring. Now I am going to go back over that two times, just go nice and slow to really reinforce that. Okay, that was fun, very uneventful. All right, so here you go. Now you're going to reach through the hole that you left. Just pull this whole lining out first. Okay, just pull that out. And then you're going to take one corner, you're going to reach through and kind of pinch that corner together. And you're just going to very easily pull it through if you left a nice big opening like I did. No, you're not going to have a fit. My dog thinks she's going to have another fit. Jojo, no. You be quiet, okay? So very, very slow. You don't want to rip your lining. Jojo, stop. She really seems to get going when I'm making a video, of course. Okay, well this is just fighting me just a little bit, but I can see that it's, it's going to be fine in just one second. <laughs> oh gosh, of course. This Disney fabric that I chose, I did get this at um, my Walmart, and it is very, very heavy duty, just on its own. It's not a canvas or anything, it's just a a nice cotton, but it's just a little thicker. It's actually really nice for a bag. I've made several things out of it. Okay. Okay, so your lining is all the way out. And now what I want to do is push out my corners of the main body of the bag. And then I'm going to push my lining all the way into the bag. This is my favorite part. This thing has taken us a few hours, a couple hours, but hopefully it'll be so worth it. Okay. Woohoo! Wow, it's cute. It's really, really a nice heavy duty diaper bag. Okay, so once you make sure that this is all lined up and it's just exactly what you were hoping for, the inside fits very, very good. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to take it over to the ironing board, okay? And I'm going to decide, you need to decide, I already know what I'm going to do, but you need to decide if you want any of your lining shelves. Okay, if you do, then you're going to leave it up just a little bit. And that's going to be mainly showing on the corners because once you close your flap, you're not going to see anything except for the corners. If you don't want to see any lining at all, boy, you need to be very diligent at the ironing board and really push that down, okay? I don't really mind mine showing just a little bit, 
but if that's a, a big deal for you and you just don't want to see it at all, then you're going to really have to go, go um, carefully iron it below the seam, the seam line. Okay, so I'm going to take mine over and I'm going to give it a really good press because what we're going to do after that is we're going to sew the outside edge. Okay, so I did iron just my sides. It got too dangerously close to the zipper when I tried to iron this down, but you know what? That's okay. So, you know, there's a couple of ways that you can do this from now on, um, from here on out. I like the idea that this can be completely unzipped all the way open, and you can have every inch of this whole entire bag. Because if I go ahead and fold these down, and do a nice top stitch. I'm actually closing off getting um, easily to my elastic pockets. Okay, because they are a little bit higher in this bag so that they have tons of room to put what they want. Either way is fine. Okay, most of you at this point, if you've gotten this far, you kind of know how you want to finish the bag anyway. I'm going to leave mine the way it is. The only thing is, is I'm going to put it under my machine and I am going to top stitch down here, moving my straps up. I am going to go ahead and top stitch. I am going to change my um, bobbin thread to be yellow though. I don't want to see that, okay? So um, this is what that would look like. You would just keep these open, make sure your um, lining is, is in there nice and clean and then just do a nice top stitch right here, okay? Okay, so yes, it did get sewn all the way around. I did leave the flaps uh, down like this and I made sure my handles were up and out of the way. <clears throat> and I can't tell you how absolutely pleased I am with this diaper tote bag. So we have just a couple of things left to do. We need to make a long crossbody strap that is um, removable of course, because it's got the little um, uh, clippy things that we can do that. And the lobster claw, let's see, what am I using? Let's see, let me pull those over here. Swivel snaps, <laughs> all that, just to get that out, okay? So we have those and our strap. Let's see, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this out right now. We're just gonna pull out the liner and of course, I'm going to say it again, you have options. You can sew this up with the sewing machine or you can sew it by hand. Um, I already have my yellow bobbin thread on my black um, uh, for the top, so I'm going to do my machine. It's going to be a lot faster, but it's, again, it's your, your preference, however you want to do this. So go ahead and tuck this black or your uh, focal fabric under and line this up perfectly. Okay, and take it over to your machine or sew it by hand and get this bottom piece closed up. Okay, so my bottom is sewn up. That just looks so nice. I'm really, really pleased with that. So guess what? The only thing we have left to do is our handle. That is absolutely adorable. Super happy with that. I hope you are super happy with yours and I hope you do if you had didn't this time around explore and get these um, these size 5 zippers. Okay they're really nice. They're heavy duty. They're a little bit more versatile. Okay so I don't have to put a tab on the end and if you do want to put a tab on the end all you're going to do is take a four inch by three inch piece, okay? Okay, so I wanted to show you how I make a zipper tab. And um, I'm just gonna use this large number five remnant that I have just to show you exactly how to do that, okay? So in case you wanna put one on your bag. So this piece that I have cut out is four inches by three and a half, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it over to the ironing board and you're gonna fold it in half. Then you're going to fold this to the center and this one to the center, just like making a strap, okay? Then you're going to fold this piece, by the way, you're going to press that, okay? 
then you're going to fold the two nice right sides together. So you still have your piece that's, that's raw in the middle showing. Now just to test the size you need it to be, you're going to insert your zipper here just to show you where it's going to be. And on mine, it's showing right there, so I'm going to pop in a pin. Just a hair over, just a scant. Pull my zipper out. Now that's going to give me my sew line. I'm going to sew right across there. Remove my pin. Back tack, and then forward, and then back tack. Okay, so what this did, <clears throat> and I'm going to leave all of this, it's a good half inch, I am going to leave it, I'm not going to cut it. Okay, so what you want to do now is open your seams and just give them a finger press. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to turn the whole thing right side out. Okay. Now go back in with your fingers and make sure that your seam is open. Okay. Mine is open. So now with your seam in the center some people like to put it on the side. I do not. Okay, so I put mine in the center, open my seams, and I take this over to the ironing board, and I press it with the seam up. Do a really good press with your iron. Turn it right sides up. You do not see the seam. It's in the middle at the bottom. You're going to set your zipper inside. I go about half of the length of the, the tab, so my zipper is stopping right here at the halfway point. And I simply sew it from here. I go across the zipper very carefully, down this side, and I meet right back there. And there you have a very nice zipper tab, okay? All right, so now we're going to get back to making our strap. Okay, so we are going to do our long crossbody strap. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't usually interface this until after I join the two pieces together. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I just lay this flat. Um, you're going to have the right side up. Mine doesn't matter because it's exact on both sides. And you're going to lay the other piece right side down, right sides together. And you're going to have this piece be flush at the top. Let me zoom it in so that you can see that. Okay? Right side is down, or up, I mean. Right side is up. This is the right side is down, and you make it just like that. Okay, now you're going to just pop a pin. Anywhere in this area. Now what I like to do is just take my measuring tool and you're going to draw a line from this corner to this corner. You have to lift it up sometimes to be able to see it. And that's just going to be a chalk line, okay? Okay. Then I'm going to sew it from here to here. I don't usually back tack, but that's totally up to you. Okay, we're going to 
going to sew from the top to the bottom. threads and then I want you to take out your pin and you're going to cut make sure before you cut it though I want you to be able to open it up and see that it is now one continuous strap okay you just have a diagonal line and that it's con one and continuous okay so now you're going to trim this away just leaving about a quarter of an inch I am going to take it over to my ironing board and I'm going to press the seam open. While I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and lightly interface this whole strap. Okay, so especially going over the seam here. Um, and then when I come back, I will show you what we do. Okay, most of you know how I make my straps, but just to do a really quick um, repeat repeat of it, this is what I do is I just fold my end over a half of an inch and I press that and I do it on the other side. Then you're going to take the whole entire thing and you're going to fold it in half and press the whole thing. After you do that you're going to open it up and you're going to make each side meet to the middle and you're going to press it. Then you're going to take that from there, fold it in half, and press it and basically you have your strap made. Then you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew the sides, both sides, very very close with a nice big long stitch and that's more aesthetic than anything. Nice big long stitch on both sides and your strap is finished. Okay so now we're going to use, um, put on our tri-glide. I'm going to zoom you in so that you can see this. Okay, so here is our tri-glide. And you're going to put one end of your fabric through the top, feed it up from the bottom to the top, go over the center, and go down the other side. And after you go down the other side, leave it about an inch long because that is where you are going to sew it. And I sew a little square about a half an inch down like that, okay? So just a half an inch. Okay, right so the best way to show you is, is I'm going to make this really, really long so that you can see hopefully a little bit better. Okay, so your triglide is on and I want you to have your seam side down. That's the side you're going to lay on to the table, okay? Then you're going to take the whole other end, making sure there is no bending, twisting, or anything. You're going to pick up your swivel hook, and you're going to hold it up like this and feed it through one side. There's no bends, remember that, okay? Just go about halfway up. Continue to grab that one end and come back up to the other end. So again, there are no bends. Take your um, end without the triglide and you're going to go back through the triglide. You're going to come up one end of it. It should be feeling a little bit tight. Pull this through a little bit and go down the other side. There we go. Give yourself a little room to work. Okay, so now on this end, you're going to take your other clip and you're just going to feed it through just like you did the other one. This time, you're just going to fold this end over about an inch. 
and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to sew a half inch square. Right okay, there. and hopefully your strap came out just absolutely perfect. So what you can do now is you can fold it up and put it in a pocket because you have your grab and goes, or you can put it on like this. that and there you go you are completely 100% done with your diaper bag I hope you are just very very happy with the result you can make it larger you can make it smaller this is your bag do whatever you would like and again this is Lynn with Vicki Lee bags and make it a great day